Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays But Botany Doesn't. Now today you can see we're back at the job site. Okay, beautiful Sunday morning. Okay, great for uh, for you know finishing an installation, putting stuff in. Now you can see it does look kind of like a, a World War One scene right here, like trenches of Kent, grounds all tore up and stuff. But you see the gr the grass has died rather nicely. The Bermuda is probably still going to come back. It's okay, we'll get a little pump bottle and use the glyph glyphosate. Okay, it really triggers some people. I get it, it is it is poison. We're not drinking it, we're using small spot applications. All right, we're not crop dusting with it. We're not, you know, putting in a Roundup Ready plants and spraying a fucking vegetable garden. We're using small responsible applications to get rid of a very bad invasive that would otherwise smutter the garden. That said, uh, you know, let's get to work. I mean, it's it's gonna look it's gonna look like hell for you know a good a good freaking couple weeks you know maybe a couple months whatever what do you give a shit what do you fucking Martha Stewart why do you care I like being able to disturb the social order by uh, having an unsightly yard I think it's nice but uh, you know again give it two months this stuff will grow up you you know as long as you got the warmth and you got a little bit of moisture this stuff's gonna really fill in it'll take off let's check it out nice. Now you can see what we're doing. We're starting at the margins and working our way in. We had an Ebonopsis, a Texas Ebony already planted, uh, some agave cuttings. I forget where I stole those from. They were just pups off a of plant. I'm sure it was fine. Got a Karwinskia, which is in Ram Nasi. Right, really cool thorn scrub plant. Doesn't need spines because the leaves are toxic as hell, but the birds, uh, the birds go absolutely bad shit over the berries. The Zyphus obtusifolia, another member of Ramnaceae, that same family. Now this does utilize spines, and it's also got actinomycete bacteria in them roots in the genus Frankia, fixing nitrogen. Oh, that's nice. But plenty of nitrogen in this uh, Rio Grande Valley soil. This little stick right here uh, can actually get upwards of about, I don't know, 12 feet tall in a season. It's uh, This is a Palo Verde. This is Parkinsonia aculeata. Can be kind of weedy, uh, it's a native though. I'm sure it's invasive as hell on other continents, but here it's a great plant We got of course leucophyllum frutescens. That's a beast that thing can take up Just the, getting the, the piss beaten out of it with the heat and a drought over there We got yucca truculiana. Now I like to go dense. All right, some people, you know plant like the like the you know plants are already grown up I like the plant like they're young Okay, still got uh, plenty of room to fill in. You can always remove stuff later, and in the meantime, you actually get to enjoy the density. Leucophyllum grows fast as hell. Got black brush over there. That'll grow moderately fast. Top out at six feet. This will top out at six feet. You got to keep in mind how big things are going to get and where the sun is. The sun, of course, is that way. That way's east. That way's south. The sun's going to move like that. And, uh, you know, that's basically all you got to keep in mind. Now, you can see we're using mulch. We already did get the mulch pile. Mulch is integral to a good planting job, all right? Hit up tree companies, go on chipdrop.com. Uh, they don't really got chip drop down here. We're a little too cutty for it, but they got, you know, you can hit up mulch, hit up arbor companies. They're always looking to dump mulch. Say, you got a job nearby, you need a dump site, I got one for you. You know, throw the guy, a, you know, throw the driver a 10 or a 20 or something if need be. All right, yucca, absolute beast of a plant. Big, uh, you know, kind of somewhat tuberous roots. It just takes off. Uh, and if you got little kids around us, so you just snip those, uh, snip those pointy ends off right so nobody gets stabbed you don't got to go to the er you know go through the whole fake name with the er thing etc over there you got the sydney attenuifolia that's a beast asteraceae is the family there sunflower family you can see a little daisy flower poking up this thing just again takes the piss of getting beaten out of it with the heat and a drought and fills in fine i shit you not two months all this stuff will fill in that thing put, you know, produces ample volunteers. It's just so much seed, you'll find them popping up. All right, now you could see we did get a little bit of Bermuda grass. That, see, this, this, was already, this bed already existed when we, when we removed the sod. So the Bermuda grass was still there. All right, and I'm sure it'll come back in some places there. But again, small spot applications of glyphosate. All right, if you're really, you know, you think glyphosate's the worst thing in the world, uh, you can go in there with the hoary little Japanese garden knife you know, and spend a few hours removing each and every little stolen and doing that, you know, a couple times a month to make sure you get the Bermuda grass that I just, you know, take a sprayer. I mean, I'll spray this even though it's right next to that. Just go right in, inch or two from the plant and just spray it. It's not that bad. You just, again, responsible applications. You're not going overboard. Stuff breaks down. We find Chromalina odorata. That thing's uh, invasive as hell in South Africa. Uh, and uh, many places on the African continent, probably in Australia too. Here it's a very important native plant. It's already done. You can see 
It's got those wind dispersed seeds, just like a dandelion. Asteraceae is the family. It's actually related uh, to stevia. And uh, just the fucking butterfly crack we're talking. Big purple flowers goes absolutely nuts. And it smells good too. That's the species epithet, odorata. Dermatophyllum secundiflorum. Okay, they call it as Texas mountain laurel. No relation to laurel whatsoever, which is in the avocado family. Uh, Loraceae. Okay, this is it's just a common name. It's garbage. Don't don't use it. It used to be Sephora. Now it's Dermatophyllum. After looking at the DNA, they switched it. P family Fabaceae, as you could tell from those pinnate leaves right there. You could see this is not utilizing hair to deal with the intense heat and uh, uh, long dry seasons. It's just got the wax. I've seen this in you know Nuevo Leon growing on a on a gypsum and a limestone down there. Beautiful fucking flowers. Can reach upwards of 20 feet tall. It's not going to grow that fast though it's going to you know probably be six foot tall maybe three years four years got a nice like i forget what agave uh if that's a species or a hybrid or whatever but they get big as hell and they're just absolutely fantastic it's just cooking up the sugars storing them in that pineapple like heart and then in 10 or 20 years it'll send up a 20 foot tall inflorescence it looks like a goddamn piece of asparagus it's, uh <clears throat> right here you got citharex berlain deeri Okay, Verbenaceae, the Verbena family, order of sages, Lamiales, it's got them opposite leaves. All right, this is great fucking living bird feeder, right? This will this will feed a ton of birds, produces all the berries, they go apeshit for it. And it's another shrub, doesn't get too big, grows relatively fast, just got to give it water, thrives in the heat. All right, Hibiscus marcianus, another great one, tops out maybe three feet. All right, beautiful red hibiscus flowers. You know, you got that epicalyx subtenant of flower, just a just a banger. You actually got some seeds in there. Hopefully, it'll volunteer. There's a little Sydneya uh, tenuifolia that I uh, put in there. Little volunteer over here. We got Havardia palens, another legume, spiny bastard. But once it gets big, the spines tend to disappear. Once they reach above the height of a, the height of a you know an herbivore and a herbivorous mammal. Uh, the spines tend to disappear, and then you get a wonderful tree that smells pretty good when it blooms. It's related to mimosas. It's got them little poofy flowers, like a little, you know, powder puff. Right here, we got Trixus inula. I put that in the ground two months ago before I finally, you know, convinced the homeowners to commit to murking the lawn. And uh, we mulched. This right here is a Asclepius uh, curacivica, which, you know, everyone warns you not to plant, but here it's actually native, right? It's, it's uh, you know, from the, we're at the northern end of its range here. This is a Mexican milkweed species, aka tropical milkweed. Right here, we put a papaya in just for shits and giggles because they grow so goddamn fast and they take the heat. This will get upwards. I mean, this thing will easily reach 15 feet tall by the end of the year if you give it enough water. Got that thick uh, tuberous root down there, and of course you get the delicious fruits off of them. Over here you got, uh, what did I put here? I forget, oh, this is just an ebony I grew from seed. Another uh, Ebonopsis abano. Got some Mammillaria hideri, a friend grew, as well as a Hamato cactus that we threw in over there. To, you know, these cacti, that might seem like a lot, you know, of mulch to put around the cactus, but, you know, down here in the Rio Grande Valley, all the cacti grow in this silty clay soil, and they tend to like it a little wet. You know, it's just so hot, they can really take it. Over here we got Isenhardia texana. Looks like a little volunteer uh, squash or pumpkin or something. Salvia coccinea right there, which volunteers freely. Great hummingbird plant. Uh, you know, birds go uh, ape shit over it. Got some uh, Bermuda. Now, I'm not going to spray this Bermuda because it's too close to the cactus. So we're just going to have to get the hoary and really go in there. Kind of a pain in the ass and time consuming. Also got phyla, not a flora right here. Again, this was, I only planted this. I mean, it grows so fast. I only planted that phyla. A month or two ago. It's Verbenaceae's the family, same as that set the I just showed you. It's a great fucking ground cover. This thing really just I mean this thing will take over your damn yard, puts out cool flowers, and uh doesn't get taller than uh you know it'll be like you know 30 feet wide by four inches tall. Over there you got another set the Yeah, they got some aloes and stuff. I let them have it. You know, that's fine, they could do that. You could see the Dracaena's died. Uh, which is nice. Uh, more of like an office plant. That's one of them blue glow agaves. I forget where I got that. Maybe it fell off a truck or something. Uh, and then over here, this is one of my favorites. Over here, got this limp uh, prickly pear. It's one of the uh, hummingbird pollinated uh, prickly pears. But, uh, you know, just put there for shits and giggles. We can move it later, hoping it'll root. Uh, anyway, this is a hibiscus striatus. It's dormant, dormant right now. This is actually a pretty rare plant grows in a corpus christi area big pink hibiscus flowers gets you know big as hell got spines on it you can see it's already coming back we just had that freeze it froze for two hours here in the morning 
a week ago, but uh, this thing is uh, coming back. This is a fucking great plant. Likes a little bit of moisture, can take full sun, and uh, you know, temperatures are only getting 80 or 90. Temps go above 90, it's gonna need part shade. And uh, unless you, you know, you can put it in like standing water or something, because a lot of, you know, like a lot of the hibiscus, I mean, there's desert hibiscus too, but a lot of hibiscus really like, really like it wet. This has an amphitropical distribution, so it occurs in coastal Texas, South Texas, and Argentina. Pretty fucking weird, but you remember them birds are going back and forth. So uh, maybe that explains that. Has anyone sequenced the DNA? I don't know. Wish this thing was alive so I could show it to you, but uh, you know, I have to come back in two months. Look at it. Look, it's just murked, all right, and it's fine. You're right? this is, it's a work in progress. You're trying to do this overnight or in two nights. Good fucking luck. You're gonna burn yourself out, spend a bunch of money, leave it like this, and just pay attention. You know, the, the goal of doing this is to get your ass out in the yard every day, pay attention to what's going on, plant new stuff. You know, it could take you three months to plant the whole thing. Hire a landscaper, sure. Spend forty grand or some shit to you know plant this up nice for you. But uh, me, I like to take it slow. We're also gonna put a little path in here so they can go to the mailbox. You know, just lay it out with logs or something, and then. Uh, you know, it works nice though. Where did I put my old duels? Oh, there it is. Now, a lot of people like to plant stuff big because they like the immediate visual impact, but it's not very smart. If you're planting some big trees, oftentimes they've been ripped out of the ground with a tree spade, you know, with a tree farm or something. You spend any shit ton of money on them and then they die anyway because when they got ripped out the ground, our roots are all, all messed up. So I prefer to plant little guys, you know, preferably tubes or one gallons, maybe a five gallon at the most. Anyway, as you can see, since you're planting small stuff till it gets big, you gotta protect it with a stake. Give it more visual presence. I like to use bamboo stakes uh, that I pilfered from a neighbor's uh, bamboo plant, which is, uh, you know, reaching into the alley. Now, I did not ask permission, but they probably think it's fine. And uh, bamboo is kind of a pain in the ass anyway. It's not native, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm sure it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'll cut those up with a nice pruning saw into segments. And then just go ahead and use those. You know, pre prevents, uh, you know, drunks or, or anything from, you know, stumbling over it. If you're doing this illegally, like in a public space, you know, it just get, again, gives it more visual presence. Uh, and uh, now dogs will come and piss on it. So you, that's something you do have to consider. If you could put like a tree stump up. Notice I'm putting the stakes on the south side too where the sun is so that if it does end up getting burned in the summer i can lean a little piece of plywood up against it give it a little bit of shade etc but hopefully we won't need that i mean these are thorn scrub plants they're adapted to this uh this a, a ball break in heat como se dice nice and uh they thrive in it you know like a happier than the pig and shit i mean look at a look at the hairs on that goddamn leaf you know leaf hairs uh, mitigate the Leaf, leaf hairs basically mitigate the evapotranspiration of moisture and, uh, you know, help keep the leaf temperatures down, reflect some of the sun, etc. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and stake the little guys. You don't really need to stake a yucca because it'll just stab you if you get too close to it. But that's what we're going to do. It's going to look real nice. Now, as you could see, it does look like a goddamn war zone. The yard is going to look like shit for a while. That's fine. It's still better than a lawn. I think a lawn looks like shit. What do you care anyway, huh? Your neighbor's gonna complain if it really matters to you. Get one of them little signs that say pollinator garden or something. You know, same way like a hippie in a van full of pot uh, would get, uh, you know, a sheriff's department sign or something, or, you know, fraternal order of police sponsor or something like that to put on the back of the van. That'll help keep the city off your back, even though your yard is gonna look like absolute hell for two months. And now I do want to remark how fucked the soil looks from the presence of the lawn here compared to other soil I've dug in and I'm very familiar with the soil in this region. Uh, this is very compact and it would make sense because there haven't been any roots to go in there and break up the soil. Roots also act as a substrate for uh, beneficial microbial life, both fungal and bacterial. So there's been so uh, you know very little biological activity in the soil aside from the grubs that uh, come and uh, kill the lawn and God bless them too. So anyway, hopefully that'll improve uh, once all this stuff starts putting on new root growth. You gotta remember for all the stuff you see going on up top, there's twice as much going on down below. I gotta pause the Mac Dre for a minute uh, while I uh, put this guy in a soil and film it. Anyway, uh, this is Dermatophyllum secundiflorum. Uh, beautiful specimen right here. You could see uh, this plug. This is the way to do it. These paper tubes Okay, this thing cost me two bucks. Got it from a grower who grows for fish and wildlife uh, restoration. Just, you know, buy a shit ton in bulk, put them in the soil immediately, or you can pot them up. You just want to get them out of that uh, 
that too because if you don't have sprinklers going off every couple hours like they do at the nursery where they grow these things that small volume of soil is going to dry out right the fuck quick so anyway this is the matophyllum you find us on the edwards plateau uh, and right where the edwards plateau starts to turn into Ch the chihuahua desert not a plant known as mezcal beans uh, is this one right here because the seeds of this look like those little red beads that were probably used uh, you know by the natives for different jewelry and stuff and was often confused with uh, peyote you know with mezcal versus peyote versus mezcal beans etc but uh, the seeds of this those mezcal beans were an important uh, you know archaeological artifact that you would find in some of them caves over there like a cave of the white shaman and stuff you know and I know plenty of white shamans I see them on Facebook you know with their uh, white dreadlocks you know pretending that they're all of a sudden you know, Native American roadmen, they got a great grandpa who's Cherokee or something, and suddenly they're, uh, anyway, we won't get into that, but uh, there you go. Dermatophyllum secundiflorum. Now, this thing is a beast. It don't like frost, and it'll, you know, it'll get set back a little bit, but it grows fast as hell, and you can see them hairs on them leaves, meaning it likes the full sun. This is Solanum arianthum, all right, the tree potato, all right? Same genus as tomatoes and potatoes, uh, but it gets about, I don't know, 10 feet tall, probably taller. You can see it just got a little one gallon. Comes with the bonus of a few individuals of salvia coccinia right there. We're going to go ahead and put this in the ground and then just water the shit out of it. Now, I like to dig the hole a little bit bigger, especially if it's just messed up clay. If there was a lot of, uh, you know, aeration in there and organic material and it wasn't too hard to get the shovel into, I wouldn't dig the hole that much bigger. But since this is so compacted and just, you know, pretty hard to shovel out, I'm going to actually make the hole a little bit bigger make it easier for them roots to get established now i should mention too you know this grass is not as dead as i would like right it's been two days okay but hopefully you know it's been that hot this were summer to be dead already it's st augustine still got some life left in it even though it was flipped over you could see i just cut a little square out so that i can plant uh, this uh, Senegalia berlandi right another really cool uh, thorn scrub plant this will get about i don't know 12 feet tall at most with multiple thin stems really great plants you know gives it light dappled shade without being too overwhelming and then has those little white powder puff flowers yeah and look at that see this is a huge chunk of clay very typical of what's beneath your lawn because those roots don't go too deep you can see there's some bermuda that actually some bermuda grass that actually went kind of deep that's part of why it's such a pain in the ass but uh you know this has not been infiltrated with roots there's you know probably very little microbial life in there it's just a big chunk of clay and when it dries out it becomes you know akin to concrete so you know that's what we got down here in rio grande valley because the rio grande's you know been depositing these you know relatively nutrient rich very fine particle size uh sediments for you know millions of years and so uh, we got a really good soil, but again, if it's lifeless like this, uh, you know, it's basically worthless. That's why you got to plant this stuff. Those roots do a lot of good work breaking that up. Now, as you can see, I, you know, it's that Senegalia I planted it's tiny as hell. I mean, it's not even popping up on autofocus on a goddamn camera. It's so, so, you know, so skinny. So anyway, I put the stake right there. Hopefully nobody will, you know, bump into it. If they do, they'll catch you, you know, the top of the stake in their groin first. God damn, some of these desert legumes, man, the roots really stink. There's like a sulfur smell coming off them roots. I don't see any nodules on here yet, though. So this thing, you know, the soil that the grower was, uh, you know, growing it in probably was super nitrogen rich. So it doesn't need that, uh, those nodules that help facilitate the uh, rhizobium bacteria that the, uh, you know, fixes nitrogen out of the atmosphere, turns it into a usable form by the plant, you know? Because they use that nitrogenase enzyme, them bacteria do, so you gotta get them tubes, you gotta get them little low oxygen environments, which is what the nodules do, so that the bacteria can, you know, use those enzymes to get the nitrogen out there. I don't see them on here yet, but it sure does stink. I've noticed that a couple different, uh, these, uh, you know, these legume species got really stinky ass roots, probably some very interesting phytochemistry too. You know, DMT's, Part of DMT is made from a legume. You know, now you can see it's all coming together rather nice. Got a bunch of tubes sticking out of the ground. I like it. I think it's, uh, you know, lawn's a beautiful beige color, slowly dying, and then all those cool thorn scrub plants will slowly be getting established. With those tubes, those bamboo shoots pilfered from the alley, uh, it's a good, you know, uh, visual weight to make sure they don't get stepped on. Now the last, uh, the last uh, thing we got to do here because uh, I might wrap it up for today and come back to it. It's, you know, get some mulch. So we got this mulch pile. Fill this up, and then we're going to go dump it. Don't ever buy store-bought mulch. It looks hideous, and it died as shit. It just looks, you know, terrible. It's like the shit they use in bank landscaping. Anyway, 
Got this uh, Justicia Spicigera right here, uh, which also grows down in the Nuevo Leon, kind of at the northern end of its range right here. But we're gonna take this mulch and especially pour it on the south side of the plant because that's what's gonna get heated up the most uh, as the foliage grows in. You know, dump it extra thick. Don't be skimpy with it. Don't, don't be cheap because you got, you know, hopefully you should have a big pile of this mulch. Lay it on thick. Fungi and bacteria are going to break it down to half of that size easily within uh, you know a few months. So what we're doing right now is preventing that sun from hitting the bare soil and baking the shit out of it, helping retain moisture, uh, and then of course you know also nurturing the microbial life, which will later break that mulch down and release, release nutrients into the soil. Essenbeckia runyonii. This is one of Texas's rarest trees. Only one wild population left. The rest have all been bulldozed. Rutaceae, the citrus family, who goes glabrous leaves, and uh, the fruits look like a little ass, you know, when they're uh, when they're ready. Like they're not edible. Citrus family, they got that orange peel texture to them, but they're not edible. Smell good though. Look at them. Look at them juicy roots too. Likes a little bit of shade when young. Grows in resacas. That's just another word for uh, oxbow lakes uh, here in the Rio Grande Valley. You know, the, the home of Freddie Fender near San Benito. That's that's where the last wild population is. You know, this ice cream truck song kind of slaps. Now, as a follow-up, I did forget to mention the mwah, chef's kiss to the whole World War I landscape that we've created here, which will be transformed into a beautiful and lush uh, and vivacious uh, greenery, you know, native plant garden uh, in a matter of only a few months. The best part about this is getting the rocks from the side of the road. Go pilfer them from a quarry. If you got to take them from some sort of corporate landscaping somewhere, you could do that too. Okay, if you got a small sedan, you could fit a couple boulders in a sedan. You know, a decent size, maybe the size of a medium-sized dog, no bigger. That's probably all you can carry anyway. And then just place them throughout the yard. And this is good too, because if the city ever does come try to mow your lawn after you've ignored numerous weedy lot violations, that will damage whatever equipment they use to do it too. So decorating with rocks, the hardscaping, don't forget that. Very important. Now, as you can see, we're basically done. I like to build little nests for all of these guys. You know, it helps, it helps prevent the water from running off. Turn the hose on a trickle and then just let it soak. You know, maybe two or three minutes per plant. You really want it to go into the roots and then soak the surrounding rhizosphere uh, to really get that, just inundate that soil. And it's better to be doing it after the sun's gone down. You know, less chance of, uh, you know, the water evaporating. But uh, it's not that hot today. It is windy as shit though, that's pretty bad for uh, evaporation, but you know, the, the grounds, uh, it's, you know, the, the hose is also on a, on a slight trickle, so it's just going right in, and it's not, you know, it's not like we're spraying a sprinkler or any stupid shit. You can see we got these little nests over here, a nice piece of trash, super windy, so all the trash from the neighborhood blows in. Uh, got that dermatophile in there, the yucca, uh, put a little hibiscus seedling in, in there, you know, we're just basically going to do a little trick. I'm going to tell the homeowner, you know, you got to put this stuff on a trickle and then uh, that'll uh, that'll do it. And then, you know, probably six months a year, maybe when this stuff is a little bigger, you take these stakes out and you get a nice little piece of thorn brush here. You know, really offend the cult of the lawn. Really offend those who believe in a cult of the lawn. And then if the city comes to mess with you, you know, you'd be super nice, super polite, but you just annoy them with information regarding how stupid lawns are, especially in the desert. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.